Crosscut sleds are the absolute first thing that any woodworker who owns a table saw should build. They are the absolute most used jig in your shop, and honestly, if you're still using your miter gauge to make crosscuts, I really think you're making a big mistake. I've made all sorts of sleds over the years, giant ones, medium-sized ones, ones for using your dado stack, miter sleds, and of course, this sled here, which today we're gonna build. We're gonna be using my new stop lock, which if you haven't checked out, I'll link a video right here. This thing is amazing, best stop lock on the market. and. We're gonna be building this one, and what's so amazing about it is that it does not take the five cut method to get perfectly square. And I think that's one of the most intimidating things about making a crosscut sled is, as you see a bunch of very experienced woodworkers make them on YouTube, you think that you need to use the five cut method. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to make this one. Very simple to get square. Uh, it's, it's super versatile. This is what I use 90% of the time. It's nice and light. It's kind of small, so it doesn't take up a lot of room, especially if you have a small shop. So let's get into it. Let me start by showing you the materials we need to make it. So here's the materials you're gonna need for your sled. You're gonna need some hardwood for your runners. And hardwood is great because uh, plywood can compress and dent very easily, but you know some good maple or walnut, anything you have laying around your shop that's hardwood is gonna be great. You're gonna need some little screws, which you're gonna countersink to attach the runner. You're gonna need some pennies, which is gonna help you attach the runner to the base. You're gonna need a piece of plywood for your base. Um, and then I took some Baltic birch and I already glued it up. Um, but I like to do three three-quarter inch sheets thick for my fence. Uh, you're gonna need some larger screws for attaching to your fence and of course, some T-Track. Now the T-Track is obviously optional, but I highly recommend getting a stop lock. Even if it's not mine, if that's not the one that you choose, I highly recommend getting a stop lock. It is the one thing that makes the best jig, the most used jig in your shop, that much better. And it really, you'll thank me later if you put a stop lock on there because being able to do repeatable cuts without having to clamp a board to your fence, it just, it's so much better. So let's get into the build. Okay, so our first step is gonna be to cut our runner. And typically most table saws are gonna be about three quarters of an inch and you want this to be super dialed in. And what I'm gonna do is probably get it super, super close and then dial it in with a hand plane and just keep checking it to make sure. When you do this with just one runner, you wanna make sure there's no play at all. And even if it feels a little snug to you, once you get some uh, paste wax on there, it's gonna move no problem. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this dialed in and attach it to our base. Okay, so now that we have our runner fitting perfectly, uh, and I did thin it out a little bit so it sits right below the table on our table saw, and we're gonna take some pennies or dimes or whatever your local currency is and put it in the miter slot. And what that's gonna do is it's going to raise our runner just above the table so when we go to put our base on, we can get some glue and get it to stick really, really well. I'm gonna put a couple small dots of super glue here and you really don't want any squeeze out on this because then it's gonna get into your miter slot and you know, you don't want glue on your table. I'm also gonna use my fence to sort of make sure that it's kind of square. It doesn't really matter. You just wanna make sure that the end of your base is hanging over where your table saw blade is gonna cut because we're gonna trim that off square later. So I'm gonna put something heavy on it for just sec so that can get a chance to cure. So now that that's dry, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put some screws in here. And I like to put a lot of screws so that there's less chance of it moving down the road. You just wanna make sure that you're not drilling through the base of your sled. We're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to the fence. Now, I already glued up this Baltic birch, and like I said in the intro, I like to do three sheets of three quarter inch thick for my fence. Um, plywood is a phenomenal choice for this because it doesn't move and stays really flat and square. Now, my stop block has positive stops every half an inch, so I'm gonna shoot for three and an eighth as my final dimension, so I'll clean up one side, clean up the other, and just the whole time making sure it's really flat and really square, and if it's not, you need to fix that because if you don't do that now, you're gonna end up uh, really having a sled that's not useful. Once we have our fence cleaned up, I'm gonna route a three quarter inch groove into the fence uh, with either the dado stack or a router bit, I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna link the T-Track that I like to use, it's really inexpensive, and it's red so it matches my jig, so I really like it. And any T-Track is gonna be fine as long as it accepts a quarter 20 bolt. So now we're gonna route out the groove for our T-Track. And I'm gonna put it as close to the front of the fence, AKA 
the side that you're going to cut on uh, because that way I have more functionality with my stop block. It allows it to move further away from the fence. I'm going to be using this really cool half inch compression bit from Bits Bits. There's a 15% off discount code. Great place to buy router bits. The way I'm going to get my depth, and again with quarter 20 bolts, it's not really going to matter if you're a little too deep on this. I mean, you don't want to be too far, but don't worry about being perfect. So what you do is you zero out your router on your workpiece, and then you use your stop here and you just set it right to the width of your material and that's a super easy way to do it. And since it doesn't matter, I'm gonna back it off just a little bit, um, just so I have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this routed out. I'm going to use an edge guide and move it over slightly until I get a perfect three quarter inch groove for this T-track and that should get it fitting nicely. So now that we have this routed out for our T-Track, there's a couple things you really need to think about before you start gluing things together. First of all, and this is my old sled so I can use it as a visual aid, I like to have my fence overhang about two and a half inches, doesn't really matter for support of your workpiece so you get less tear out. Um, and then you're gonna have your kerf of your blade here. And this is important if you have a saw stop. Aluminum can be cut by any woodworking tools. In fact, at the end, I'm gonna just trim this off with an old Suizan Ryoba saw I have. But you don't want to have your saw stop trim your aluminum by accident. So make sure that you, when you glue in your track, you're thinking that you're putting it, you know, an eighth inch away from where your kerf is gonna be because that can set off your saw stop brake cartridge. The other thing you should know is there is a stamped line through the middle of T-Track and that is to put screws in it. Don't do it. We're gonna use five minute epoxy. I don't like to put screws in mine because it's so thin here on the bottom that to be able to countersink them right, you end up getting your bolts that, you know, if you don't get really, really, really thin bolts, they get caught up on the screws and it's a pain in the butt. I find that five minute epoxy works great. Uh, or if you've got a lot more time, you can use something like Total Boat to glue it in. Uh, but either way, there's not tons of pressure on it with the quarter 20 bolts just by the nature of how stop blocks work. So uh, let's go ahead and five minute epoxy this thing and get this sled put together. So now we're going to attach and square up our fence. And first we need to trim our piece of plywood and we're gonna do that by simply putting it in our miter slot, raising the blade up until it's just coming out of the plywood and slicing off that edge. And that's gonna give us the exact edge where our blade is and give us a nice square reference area for attaching our fence. Okay, now here's the part where we're gonna put on our fence. And this is where it is time to be ripe, boys and women. It is time to get this correct. So you wanna get your biggest, most trusted square. And what we're gonna do is gonna be kind of a two-part thing here. We're gonna glue with wood glue and super glue. And that's gonna get it to set in place. I'm gonna throw some clamps on it for a few minutes, let it tack up. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw some screws in it so it doesn't move. And unlike the five cut method, which is for a sled that goes across both sides of your table saw, you can do it this way because we have a reference edge to put a square on, whereas on a regular cross cut sled, you don't. And that's why this is the easiest way to make a quick cross cut sled. So what we're gonna do is put wood glue and super glue on this, ensuring that our T-track is not past our edge and that we have a nice overhang here. This is gonna be good backer board for when you're making cuts. This does not have to be trimmed off. You can if you want to, but I personally like to leave it. We're gonna glue and then clamp, give it a couple minutes to set up and then screw it on and we're gonna have a perfectly square crosscut sled. Okay, so we have our fence installed in a very, very square location, and it's time to put our Cats Moses Universal No Deflection Stop Block. Uh, if you haven't heard of this, there's a video up here in the left-hand corner talking about all the features in detail, but basically this is a no deflection stop block, meaning it's not gonna move at all when you slam things against it. It can be two and three quarters to three and three quarter inches tall. Uh, it has a ton of other features, but I guarantee you this is the best stop block on the market. So check out this video or head over to my website.
website. There'll be a link down below where you can pick this up. So we have this installed, which is one of the most useful additions to the most useful jig in the shop, the crosscut sled. And we're gonna go ahead and test it and make sure that everything is square. No camera tricks here. That is a perfectly square piece of wood. Absolutely perfect. And that's really the benefit to doing a sled like this is you don't have to have a degree in mathematics to get it square. That being said, you lose a couple features, like I said, which is, you know, width and some, some great functionality about going left and right of the blade. So I'm gonna release a couple more videos on crosscut sleds, on doing the five cut method for squaring a fence and how to do a couple other different sleds that I think are really essential in the shop. And of course, all of them will have the Cat's Moses universal no deflection stop block on them. So uh, I'd appreciate it if you go check that out. This is brand new and really just my pride and joy. We've been working on this for a while. So guys, thanks for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe, head over to the website, grab a t-shirt, stop block, a dovetail jig. It really helps the channel out. Uh, thank you so much for watching and stay safe in the shop.